So first of all, we want to talk about the complex plane. So in our normal Cartesian coordinate plane, we have an x-axis and we have a y-axis. Now we're going to be talking about the real axis and the imaginary axis. So where our x-axis was is now our real axis, and our y-axis becomes our imaginary axis. So if I asked you to graph 2 plus 3i, what would you do? Yep, 2 to the right, up 3. So if we go 2 to the right and up 3, we put a dot there, and that would be 2 plus 3i. If I asked you to graph 5 minus i, what would you do? Yep, write 5, down 1, put a dot there, and that is 5 minus i. Because positive is, a positive real axis is to the right, negative real axis is to the left, positive imaginary to the up, and negative imaginary down. Yes, sir. Yep, A is the real part of your complex number, and B is the imaginary part of your complex number. Okay, so far so good? All right, what if I asked you to graph negative 5i? It's down 5 from the origin or from 0, 0. We're going to go down 5. And finally, if I asked you to graph negative 4, to the left 4. So some of your assignments going to be doing things as simple as this. Okay, questions on this part? All right, so very similar to what we did yes or last uh, earlier this week, right, with vectors, only we're not drawing the arrow. Okay, so here we go, next piece. So when I ask you what is the absolute value of negative 5, What does that mean? The answer is 5, right? And what, what do we define the absolute value as? Thank you. The distance from 0 on a number line. So negative 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps back from 0 on the number line. So this distance is a positive 5. Okay? So, if I asked you to tell me what is the absolute value of 3 plus 4i, first of all, let's plot it. How would I graph 3 plus 4i? 3 to the right. Four up. So if I want the absolute value of 3 plus 4i, what am I looking for? We want the distance from 0 to 3 plus 4i, like the vector, right? Okay, so when we were talking about magnitude before, it looked like that, right? If I'm looking for the absolute value of 3 plus 4i and I want this length, what are you going to do? Yeah, square 3, square 4, take the square root, right? So it, we're 4 in the i direction, right? 3 in the x direction, 4 in the i direction, right? So if we want the distance from that point, of the distance of that number from 0, 0, we're looking for what was the magnitude in vector land, right? This is called the absolute value. 
So we would say that we're going to take the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared and 9 plus 16 is, so the square root of 25 is 5. That's the absolute value of 3 plus 4i. Okay? Mind blown? Just a connection from what we just did, right? Okay? It's the length of the line segment from the origin to the point. All right, so let's find the absolute value of negative 5 plus 2i. That is the absolute value. The magnitude of a vector, it, you use the same same process that you use when you're finding the magnitude of a vector when you're finding the absolute value of a complex number. Just use the Pythagorean theorem. Only we're not dealing with vectors now, right? We're dealing with complex numbers, but it's the same process. Okay? So if we want to find the, mag the absolute value of negative 5 plus 2i, what are we going to do, Alex? Uh, shouldn't be equal to zero. Square root of negative five squared plus two squared, right? Negative five squared is two squared is twenty-five plus four is easy peasy, right? So nothing scary about these, as long as we make those connections and we understand that we're doing the same process. Okay, last year, for some reason, my students didn't make that connection. Maybe I didn't help them to make that connection, but not all my students made that connection. They thought it was something completely foreign and new. Okay, so next. Now we want to talk about the trig form of a complex number, because the trig form of a complex number can help us do things like take a complex number to the seventh power, for example, or find the root of a complex number. So first of all, we've got this complex number, a plus bi, and we just said that its absolute value was the square root of a squared plus b squared, right? So its absolute value is truly R, that's the length of the segment from the origin to a plus b, i, to that point. Okay. So if we want the trig form of a complex number, what will a be equal to? Okay. Well, first of all, let's start with, th with theta. How would we find theta? Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of b over a. Does that look familiar? Yes. When we were working with vectors, we had to find direction angles, right? And the direction angle looked very, very similar to this angle. Okay, just a different plane. Okay, different labels on the plane. All right, so we know how to find theta. We, we also need to know how a and theta and r are related. So a, if I was trying to find it, right? A is the same thing as R So the the what if we want to com compare A R and theta, right? We're using the cosine, right? So the cosine of theta is equal to A over R. So A is equal to R times the cosine of theta, right? Look familiar? And C 
in part C, we want to know how our B and theta and R are related. B will be equal to R sine theta. So if I want to write this in the form, the trig form of this equation, I know what theta is, right? So if I want to write this in the trig form, I would say, guess what? I need it to be an A plus B I form. So I need it to be an R cosine theta plus R sine theta I. A plus B I. So A plus B I is standard form, and R cosine theta plus R sine theta times I is the trig form. Okay? The only thing is we don't like to have that I hanging out here. We like to bring it in front. And since R is been, has been distributed to both, we actually pull that out as well. So this is what this looks like. Our trig form of a complex number is r times the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. And r is times that whole quantity. So what does this look like? To, from last section, remember that we were when we were trying to find the component form of a vector, we would take the magnitude times the cosine of theta and the magnitude times the sine of theta. They look pretty darn similar, don't they? So there's no major change here. The magnitude is our r, it's our absolute value. It's the distance between that point and zero in the in the imaginary of the complex plane. And the cosine theta sine theta was used as well to figure out what the A and the B, the horizontal and the vertical movement were. Make sense? So this is nothing new. It's simply a, a translation of what we just learned about vectors in complex numbers. Okay? Now, Mathematicians are lazy, so we're going to shorten this up a little bit. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Okay? So, given the complex number negative 5 plus 6i, I want you to write it in trig form. So if we go to negative 5 on the, on the real axis and 6 on the positive complex axis, there's my negative 5 plus 6i. So we need to find two things. We need to find r and theta. So which one do you want to find first? Okay, so to find r, what are we going to do? Exactly. Negative 5 squared plus 6 squared. So 25 and 36 is how much? So what's r? Square root of 61. Thank you. It should be. We're used to seeing it this way, right? Okay. So R is the square root of 61, right? Now what? So 
the tangent of theta will be inverse tangent and what we're looking for, yep. Tangent of theta is 6 over 5, right? So we want the inverse tangent of 6 over 5. That'll give us our theta. What do you get when you plug that into your calculator? The 50.19? Good question. Okay. So if we do a negative, what do we get? Negative 50.2. Okay. So if theta is a negative 50.2, does that make sense for it to be a negative 50.2? So we usually want to use the, the positive angle, right? And then ask ourselves which quadrant we're in. So we're in the second quadrant. So this is 50.2. I'm going to drop this down. So what would this theta be? Good. How'd you find it? Good. So when you're in the second quadrant, we're short of 180. So we take 180 minus the reference angle. When we're in the third quadrant, we're beyond 180, right? So it's 180 plus the reference angle. And when we're in the fourth quadrant, we're not all the way to 360. We're shy of it. So we say 360 minus that reference angle. So far, so good? Okay, so we've got the two pieces that we need, right? So what's it going to look like in street form? We like to put it in front so it doesn't get lost. Okay? And like I said, we get lazy. So sometimes we like to call this the square root of 61 cis 129.8. Cosine imaginary sine. And that was before the days of CSI, so I don't think that's the reason they like to put the I first, right? But it's 129.8. Okay, before the all the CSI shows. All right. Questions on this one? Uh -huh. We just leave it like that, okay? Because if we calculate it, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> it's, it's, it, it won't be real. You're right. It's complex. But it will we'll take it back to the previous form. Okay? So if we take that square root of 61 times the cosine of 129, we will get negative 5 back. And if we take the, the, the sine of 129.8 times that square root of 61, we'll get our 6 back. Absolutely. That's your check. Make sure it works. Okay? All right, so what if we wanted to write z in standard form? Yep. That's the a plus b i form. When we have angles that we know, we need to leave them in radical form, right? If it's something like it's 53 or 127 degrees, then by all means put them in the calculator. So what's the cosine of 135? Oh, sorry, cosine of 315. Root 2 over 2, positive or negative? Positive. It's a 45 degree angle in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, right? So we are taking 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. Plus root 2 over 2 again, right? The sine of, of a 45 is also root 2 over 2, but positive or negative? Negative. So I need to change my sine from a pot plus to a minus. I'm going to take that 3 times that square root of 2 over 2. And now I need to add in i.
Nothing earth shattering here, right? Doing the same things we did with, with, with vectors, but now we're using those same processes to find trig forms of complex numbers. Questions on this one? Absolutely. Yep. If you run into an opportunity to reduce the fraction, always reduce the fraction. If it is a, one of the primary angles, the, the unit circle angles that we know, we always keep it in radical form. Otherwise, we use our calculator. Mm -hmm. If you can. Yep. This is the most pristine, and it's going to get you the right answer back. Okay. All right. Here we go. Don't write all this down. I want you to see what it looks like. It's on in your book. Okay. Turns out that we can multiply and divide trig functions a little bit easier if they're in, and especially take them to powers easier if they are in complex form than if they are in standard form. And that's one of the reasons why we teach you this. Okay? So if we have two complex numbers, z sub 1 and z sub 2, and the first one has an r sub 1 for its r value, its length, right, its absolute value, and cosine of its angle plus i sine of its angle is, is its trig form. Here's our second one with its trig form, right? If we want to multiply those two complex numbers together, we multiply the r's and we add the angles, okay? Multiply the r's, add the angles. If you're dividing one trig number in, in, or one complex number in trig form by another, you divide the r's and you subtract the angles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll be given two of them. And we'll say, multiply them or divide them. Okay. The key thing is that the angle has to be between 0 and 360 degrees when it's all said and done. Okay. Multiplying, multiply the r's, add the angles. Dividing, divide the r's, subtract the angles. Okay. And then make sure your angle is between 0 and 360. Exactly. Okay. So here we go. Here's an example. So here's that notation, right? Abbreviating it so I don't have to write it all the way out. But this is the same thing as 4 times the cosine of 120 plus I sine 120. And we're taking that times 6 times the cosine of 315 plus I sine 315. A lot less work to write at the, uh, the top way. It does seem confusing until you've seen it a bit. Okay? So we're multiplying two trig functions, or two, two um, complex numbers in trig form. What are we going to do? Four times six, and then cosine so what is what do we do with our angles? Add them one twenty plus thirty five three fifteen. So four thirty five, right? plus I sine 435. Yep, I just added them up. I should have probably written 130 plus 315, 120 plus 315. Okay. 
So what do we have to do to finish it off? Yep, change it back to 435 is what? What does it have for a coterminal angle? Four. So yeah, don't don't work that part out yet though. If unless we wanted to get it back into the other format, what do we have to do? You could, okay. So, so you guys are going the next step. All we're asking for, hold the thought, okay. All we're asking for is, hey, if this is 435 degrees, that's 360 plus what? Okay. So this was 360 plus 175. So we want to rewrite this as 24 cosine 175 or 75. Cosine 75 plus I sine 75 or 24 cis 75. Okay, that's all you had to do. Now, the question that you said you were asking then is if we would take 24 times the cosine of 75 and 24 times the sine of 75, will we, do you want us to, to get to that point where we're back in a standard form? And in most cases, unless they tell you in standard form, they want you just to leave it in trig form. Does that make sense? Okay. Other questions that you have? All right. Let's do a division and we're done. So now we want to take 15 cis 240 and divide that by 3 cis 135. When we're dividing two complex numbers in trig form, what do we do? Yep, divide the numbers and subtract the angles. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, and this 240 minus 135 is how much? Two fifteen or 115, is that right? 130, one, 105. Okay, 25, 6, 105. Not bad, right? <laughs> All right, here's your assignment. Remember, a lot of this is graphing, okay? So it's going to come easy.